Have you ever experienced something so crippling in your life that has made you feel broken? I have. Are you someone who has a giving heart but is struggling to feel good themselves? Are you consistently putting your needs aside to take care of everyone else? If so, you're not alone. Giving starts with giving to yourself so that you are able to give of yourself to other people. Isn't it time you took back control and discovered what makes you tick? Join me in my journey and find out how you can feel better about yourself, live your best life, and share that with others. Thinking of yourself, it doesn't make you selfish. It makes you brave. I'm Nelia, and this is the Giving Starts With You podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Giving Starts With You podcast, powered by Travel Live Give, where we help you uncover your gifts, discover your passion, and impact the world so that you can live a more meaningful life, one of passion, one of purpose. You can discover what you were born to do and how you can make a difference in the lives of others. This can be healing for you. It can help manage anxiety, depression, all of the things, as well as change the lives of those that you are helping. So everybody wins. On this show, we just want to shine a light on the forgotten and the ones who feel voiceless and help people through their lives. No one should be living life feeling alone. So come and join the community. Um, If you are interested in learning more and are interested in launching your own passion projects, such as my ukulele project, I invite you to look at the parts of your life that may or may not be working for you. So go ahead and download the free blueprint, Live Your Best Life at www.travellivegive.com slash blueprint. Let's get right into the episode. Hello everyone, welcome to the Giving Starts With You podcast. Thank you again for joining us for another week, another week where we have a brand new episode every single Monday. Now today I am so thrilled because we are in Antigua, Guatemala, and we just arrived in Guatemala City. Um, We have been here together for about 10 days and it's been phenomenal and all we've been doing is giving back and pushing the envelope on our comfort zone which has it has brought us so much growth in the last 10 weeks and that's what I want to talk to you guys about today as well I want to talk about growth as well as how being financially educated and being financially aware and making better decisions can be one of the best gifts that you can ever give to yourself this show is all about how we can give to ourselves you know we've had lots of people on here which have been speaking about awareness, about sleep deprivation, about nutrition. We have had entrepreneurs come on and talk about so many topics, but we still have yet to have had a guest that's talking to us about financial literacy. So today I'd like you guys to welcome um, one of my friends and colleagues, I guess, uh, Lisa Ballstad. Welcome to the show, Lisa, how are you? Good, thank you, Nelia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, Um, so Lisa is someone who is very giving of her heart and I don't work with people or have people on the show which I don't feel have a lot of genuine um, genuine characters to them and so Lisa's no exception Um, Lisa is a financial coach who wants to really help women you know learn a bit about financial literacy so we can become more powerful take care of ourselves better and she's gonna go into what that all means so yeah, I just, I want you guys to really listen, take some notes, and uh, listen to some things that we're going to talk about, because, you know, sometimes we think that gifts are only, you know, bubble baths and self-care and all of that stuff, and I really want to debunk that myth, because if you can't take care of yourself in all of these other ways with confidence and learning about money and what it can actually do for you, and not being afraid to talk about money, this could be a massive step forward in your business career and in your personal career. So, Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Sure, I am a mom, I'm a wife, I'm an entrepreneur, and um, I'm a gal that likes to learn about money and financial stuff. I'm not a financial advisor, I don't have a degree in that, 
but I do have a lifelong experience of managing money, making mistakes, getting myself into a wreck, digging myself out of that wreck, and hopefully moving forward and sharing my knowledge with other women so that they can avoid those kind of things that I went through. That's amazing. I love, and I always say this on the show, but I do respect people who have been through it and are now ch turning it into a business because there's nobody I would rather work with than somebody who not only has the skills and like brain smart, but also has been through it and they can tell you what worked for them, what worked for you. It doesn't mean that they will, it will all work for you, but if you don't try it, you will never know. So I'm so excited. So Lisa, why do you think being financially literate is a gift that you should give to yourself as a woman? I just, I think so, so many reasons, I think. Um, as a, as a woman, you know, I live in the United States. I, every country, every culture is a little bit different, but I think it is a gift that we need to give ourselves to, um, to, to just have that strength and that independence. And I'm not saying you can't be married. I'm married, I've been married for almost 30 years. I'm not saying you can't have a boyfriend or be in a relationship with somebody, but I'm just saying you need that sense of um, security for yourself. I know for me personally, just, Knowing that we are financially smart and financially secure gives you that peace of mind. And I'm not, I'm not stressing every day. I, you know, I've learned how to plan. I've learned how to budget. I've learned things by trial and error. I've learned things from learning from other financial people. It's just putting that all together and um, takes that stress off of you. And we all know what stress can do to us medically. Um, you know. With your mental health it can play a role on that and you know if you're in a situation and you need to leave that situation if you're not financially independent that, it, it puts another stress on that whole situation yeah we were talking earlier before we hit record about that we each know um, some people in our lives that are in a toxic relationship and are trying to leave and they you know master the confidence the bravery all of those things but financially they're not ready so it's holding them back which means more abuse too. So, you know, you just never know. We all hope that our relationships are gonna work out. We all hope that the things that we plan for our life are going to work out. But if they don't, it's really important to be able to pick yourself up from that place and not have to start all over again because you're on your own as well. You know, what, what, right. So I know a lot of the people struggle with its mindset. So how can we change the way we think about money? Yes. So Lisa, how do we change the way we think about money? Because a lot of people don't feel confident in even starting this process. And a lot of people have a negative connotation with money. Either, you know, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about where that comes from. Right, I think the key thing when we're talking about money mindset is to think back to your first money memory. Think back to when you were a kid and how your family viewed money, maybe what you were taught directly, but probably more indirectly about money. Oftentimes, as we, we talked earlier as well, that our parents maybe didn't sit us down and tell us certain things about money, but that you picked up indirect things. That maybe the budget was tight, or maybe the budget wasn't tight, or you didn't ask to go on trips because you didn't have that, you knew the family didn't have extra money. Like all of that is kind of a indirect or a non-verbal communication that we picked up. So I think if we're going to talk about mindset, we really need to look back to our childhood a little bit. Not to be critical, not to say what's right and wrong. There's no right and wrong. There's just what is. And understanding that will understand where your mindset is today. And then we can work on ways to overcome that and, and free that up for you. Yeah, because information is powerful. I love that you said it's not right or wrong. So if I think of something personal, I could say, so my parents were immigrants, they came to Canada uh, very young, they were they met here and got married here, and I didn't know what I wanted to do after high school, and I, because I didn't know a lot about money, I felt guilty applying for a school that I know perhaps they couldn't afford just to pick something. So sometimes, you know, when, you, when I look back at what are my money memories, I remember that, or I remember arguing, you know, that once a month when it's time to pay the bills and everything. So I think that's really important um, concept. So would you agree, because you're the expert, but would you agree <laughs> that you become more confident when you're 
financially literate, that you become more powerful with yourself, that you don't take as, that you may take good risks as opposed to bad risks. Definitely, definitely you become more confident. Uh, it's just. I, I just, um, you know, when you learn about something, with anything, when you learn about something, you become more confident, you become more knowledgeable. The more knowledge you have, the more confidence you gain. And I think sometimes with money, uh, people are intimidated. Women are intimidated. Maybe they don't understand the lingo. Maybe they do, but they still, a lot of times there's a lot of extra lingo that we don't need, right? <laughs> We can make it so simple, but as humans, we choose to complicate things. Um, but That's yeah. what I love about what you do. I mean, she makes it so simple. Okay, so she has this analogy about tacos. I'm going to show you how simple we can get. For those of you who are a little bit nervous or a little bit unsure that you even want to entertain this. Because okay, I can tell you one thing for sure. If you don't learn about money, your money issue will not improve. <laughs> Right. So. right. And, and and knowledge is power. So how do you get rid of fear? You get you get knowledge about a topic to get rid of fear. Absolutely. So if you get some knowledge about finances and money management, it's going to get rid of that fear of I don't have enough or, you know, there's other people who are afraid to spend. They just save, save, save. There's got to be a balance in there. Mm -hmm. So I heard one financial person describe it as this, and I thought this was genius. She put it into taco dollars. <laughs> okay. She's saying that a taco costs five dollars we're using that for an example if i go shopping for a new pair of shoes and they're sixty dollars that's 12 taco dollars to me that's 12 tacos so are those shoes worth 12 tacos yes or no again no wrong answer but it's a way for you to evaluate it something that means something to you like if you love tacos if you love um you know whatever ice cream maybe you love an ice cream sunday once a week you could put it into ice cream dollars it's just kind of, it's a fun way to bring mindfulness to your spending and your, you know, just to evaluate it. I'm not, if you think it's worth 12 taco dollars, well then you buy those shoes, girl, because they are worth 12 taco dollars. But if you don't, maybe you think, I only want to spend seven or eight taco dollars, then you look for a different pair of shoes. Absolutely, I love that so much. So Lisa helps women who are going from, you know, from out of school and are financially stable in their own career, who are professional and who are starting to make money and want to know, hey, how can I make my money go further? So we were talking earlier about, you know, it's okay to buy stuff on sale. Right. We all love a good sale. <laughs> but how powerful would it be if you actually walked into a store and didn't even have to ask the price? How would you feel, you know? You may only do it once or twice, but the feeling behind that, it makes you want to be make better choices, right? Right. And I think that's amazing. So we're not saying buying on sale is bad. We're not saying you can never buy on sale, but it is empowering to know that you don't have to buy everything on sale every time when you're financially secure. So Lisa, many times um, I interview people or, you know, even in, in not necessarily formal interviews like this, but I, I have a lot of conversation with people because I talk a lot. And a few times I hear this, I hear, well, people think I have a lot of money and they look down on it. And that having money is a negative thing. And that, oh, you must have money, you must have stepped on somebody to get it. Or you must have been born rich, or you must have all of these negative things. And I think not being a financial advisor, like being a consumer of yours, it makes me feel confused because I don't think you should feel bad about having money sometimes you know it's like okay so I'm a heavy girl I'm not gonna hide that um, sometimes I used to think well if I lost weight because I was a little thinner before um, I don't want the attention no. so if I want to you know be looked at in a different way and maybe be ignored a little bit because I didn't like being in the center of attention maybe if I'm heavier people won't notice me as much so I find sometimes people with money, you either have two scenarios. You have the ones that flaunt it, and you have the ones that hide it. And before we continue our conversation, I want people to know that your value has nothing to do with the value of your dollar, of what you have. But it does change how you look at life, it changes what you do in your life, and it changes how you feel about yourself. So part of money, uh, money literacy being a gift to yourself, you know, so many people, I, I hope that people are listening 
and they understand that. Right. So what could we add today for them that would kind of convince them that it is a gift? This is something they need to do for them. Right. And just to kind of touch on what you said there, Nelia, it's like, and that is a cultural thing too, about if you make more money, sometimes you feel bad, especially if you came, you know, my dad was very blue collar working, worked hard for a living, taught us how to work hard, and that's great, but we shouldn't feel guilty if, if, if we're getting ahead, so to say, or if we're having a little better life than that. Um, and so some of that is cultural, like we should be proud of it. I think as women, one of the things we need to do more is to talk about money and finances with other women within um, groups that you're comfortable with. You know, I suggest doing like a money talk night once a month with some close girlfriends. I love that idea. Yeah, and it's, you know, obviously there's some things that have to be in place for that to work. You have to have, I would start with a, just, a, you know, keep it a small intimate group, three to five people. But everybody has to have the understanding that that's, that's confidential what you guys discuss. And maybe start with, you know, I would have a host and maybe initially have some questions, but have them kind of open-ended, like, tell me about your money memory in childhood, or something not too personal right up front until you build some relationships, but why do we not, as women, talk about our salaries? Why do we kind of downplay it, or, or um, you know, I've worked with women who are like, it's okay if I make a little less because my husband has a good job, or this job is flexible, or... They have benefits, or right? Whatever. But it's like if you're doing the work, then you should be paid for the work you're doing, right? That industry standard, and I've been there myself. I've done it to myself, but I think it's something that slowly, as we talk, and it's not to be boastful or bragging, but maybe within your money talk group, there's somebody that's really good at writing resumes, and you want to apply for a different job, then she can really help you get that resume up to speed to apply for those jobs, or somebody that's maybe more in tune with investing that can teach the group. Just different things, and I think, you know, as women, we talk about everything else, right? Yes. I mean, we talk about boyfriends and husbands and children and... And what's and, going wrong. Right, and hopefully not boyfriends and husbands at the same time, <laughs> but, oh, um, but you know, we, we will. We'll talk about sex and politics and religion, and we'll avoid money like the plane. We have a lot of bitch sessions. Yes. <laughs> like, no, I'm going to take that out, but we do. We complain, you know, women get together, we complain, oh, my boyfriend didn't do this. Or my, you know, very rarely do we build each other up. Right. And we need to do that. And if you do want to start a group, and you are a little bit ashamed of your situation, that's okay, too. You don't need to delve out information. Correct. The more, but the more honest you can be, Right. The more you get out of it, I think. Right. But and that's right. When you organize that, you've got to make sure the individuals know each other and that they'll agree to that confidentiality. Yeah, Just, but even if you don't, can you not ask questions that maybe aren't like they don't give figures and they don't give up yes. too much? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then maybe you can just educate each other. What's a good place to go? Um, I know your coaching is amazing. And I'm not just saying that because I know Lisa, but I won't do business with people who are in it to get famous and are in it to only make money. You know, I've been there because Lisa cares. She knows what it's like. She's been in that, in that other side. And she knows how it made her feel. And she, you know, I think you've admitted to me that you were ashamed back then. Right, and right. So, and so we go through that. I mean, that's life. Who doesn't ever have trouble? Right, uh, right. You know? Financial or other trouble. Exactly. Yeah. There's always some challenge. And having that, that experience yourself, who better to help you than Lisa? And I can tell you that um, she will meet you where you are in your journey. She will take her time to really make sure that you learn the different, you know, the fundamentals. Because if you don't, trust me, I didn't always. Um, if you don't, then things are going to be confusing and they're going to seem hard. And when things are hard, we don't do them. Correct. Right. 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 And and we don't want to put shame on it. So many financial people make you feel shameful if you spend. Um, and we were also discussing earlier, like with children, you cannot correct a behavior if you make them feel shame. Yes. You know, when you're disciplining a child. or So I don't want a coach that makes me feel shameful. Like, you know what? We've all made mistakes. Let's learn from it. Let's, no, I have. Let's adjust and let's move on. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, when I... I'll share a little bit. <laughs> when the bill collectors are calling and you're hiding in the garage because family's in town, yeah. that's when things had to change, right? 
Yeah, and I, I love that you're being so genuine with us. I know it's hard to talk about, and you just showed us how much you care about helping people because you know. Right. We, you know, that's why I like helping people with anxiety because I spent so much right. of my time right. depressed and anxious, and we don't want to feel like that, you know. And it's hard, you know, because we all work. We all want to think that we're smart with our money. Right. And when we're not, we start to associate that with our value. Yes. And it's not. It's not. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's just like anything. Like you said, it, you've got to learn to not associate that with that. It's just whatever. I made some bad decisions or we didn't adjust when we should have adjusted. And things can just kind of pile up on you. But when you're in it, like you said, it's emotional. I mean, it is. thinking about it, you remember, you don't forget right. times in your life that are hard. You right. don't. But we just hope that, you know, the podcast shows you that you can take those things, turn them around, help yourself, whether it's money or whatever it is that you're struggling with. Listen to the advice of other people because we need coaches. Like, you know, so, so okay, some of you might be asking, well, if I'm having money troubles, how do I pay for it? So that's something I talk about a lot. So first of all, there are lots of reasons. Um, you know, I paid for how to make your podcast and I could have learned that online. I could have not paid a dollar for that and I paid a pretty penny for it because number one, I did it. Um, I cut, you have accountability. Yes. You know, we all have good intentions, but unless you're working with somebody, I know because I've tried this many times and I think- Same here. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> you really do need that. and. The investment it's an investment don't look at things like even when you buy a course or something don't look at things as it's just another um, yeah because if you take a class or if you do a group like Lisa's saying or if you hire someone like Lisa um, you will probably 99% if you do the things that they tell you will make that money back no problem and I know again that's probably something that people listen to all the time but you know you give what you get or you get what you give, in my case you do both, but you <laughs> you know, if, if you put in the work, you reap the rewards. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but if I were you, I would want to work with somebody who knows what it feels like because um, it is hard and money breaks up marriages and it breaks up friendships and it's tough and we work so hard, why shouldn't we be recognized? Correct. You know, we really right. need to stick up for each other and stop putting each other down. And right. And just the, like as entrepreneurs too, we work with a coach. Yes, we do. To become better entrepreneurs, right? To take it to that next step, to have that accountability. And it's it's the same with any coaching. We just, we need each other yeah. we need to help each other. And I mean, if things haven't been working now, it's going to change. Yeah, like our coach always says, our right. coach always <laughs> says, if nothing changes, nothing changes. You can cry next week and you can cry the week after about how you know how your finances are but if you don't change anything I mean the truth is in a year from now you're going to be even worse off because the year has changed and you keep spending right? right right so Lisa if somebody is in a really tough spot what is one simple thing that they can do if they have debt or if they can start to get ready right I think changes? really the first thing to do is to sit down and put it all just on paper or in a, you know if you like to use the computer put it on a document but really spell it all out because so often we avoid looking at it <laughs> you know I've been guilty of it myself just put that over there I'll look at it later right I don't want I don't want that bad news right now but half the time it's not as bad as we think it is so the first step is like let's just write down all the debt credit card medical bill whatever it is write it all down and let's see where you're at and, and what needs attention first um, and if it's really bad take a break write right. it down come back to it right. a day later and have a fresh look at it maybe. right right sit down with a cup of coffee a glass of tea whatever you know and and just the first step is that whole kind of recognizing what's going on information like yep. you said information is power so if you have like three credit cards and you owe money on each one, how do you figure out what to do? I mean, if you only have a small amount of money to put right. on each one, what do you do? Because right. you still have to pay them all. Correct. There's a couple different ways to approach that. Um, you can approach it by looking at the one with the lowest balance first and putting any extra money. Obviously, you're going to keep making your minimum payments on all three, but if you had 25 extra dollars a month, you could put it on the one with the lowest balance knock that one out first that gives you a quicker psychological win you know that balance is gone 
When that balance is gone, you take the minimum payment plus that 25 and you move it to the next car. You okay. don't say, oh, now I have extra money for my, you know, my night out or something. And I'm not against a night out. A lot of us do that. Celebrate. Great, great. Yeah. Celebrate the win, but then continue on. The other option is to look at the one with the highest interest because that's costing you the most money and target that one first. Same concept, putting a little extra, $5, $10, whatever you can a month, that little extra over the minimum payment is gonna chip that away all the faster for you. So $5 really makes a difference, like if it, that's all you have. If that's all you have, I would do it, absolutely. Every little bit counts. Mm. And then once you get those chipped away, you can move to the one with the next highest interest. Yeah, oh. so debt is the thing that holds us back the most Definitely. from moving forward. Definitely. And, I, you know, I've been there. It's like, oh, I want to do this, <laughs> but I've got this debt hanging over my head. And I think, oh, if I didn't have that debt, that money I could put in savings, I could put towards a trip, I could donate to somebody less fortunate. Or, you know, Absolutely. there's so many different options you could do with that. And if you do pay off the lowest one, or whichever one you choose, the lowest or the lowest interest rate, to reward ourselves let's go spend money how about if we maybe take something we talk about on this show a lot and instead of spending money give time and that will make you feel so good that you're celebrating and you don't have to spend money you know and I think that's a great way to do it too you can still celebrate your win yes but not spend money right. and give I back in that. time yeah you know we talk a lot about giving back on this show but it doesn't always mean you have to Use money that you don't have to feel like a good person. Correct. Because a lot of people will donate what they don't have, and that's right. not what I want either. No. no. Our time is so valuable to any nonprofit. Your time, um, you know, I just think of like animal shelters always need someone to walk dogs or come pet cats. Um, or host these workshops, like you're saying, yeah. give your time. Yeah. These money talks. Yes. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, that's amazing because, you know, I think we're just taught, not everybody is taught how to manage money growing up. Correct. So those of us that are, need to help the others. Right. <laughs> Honestly, because it's not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. You know, saving up, I remember being a teenager without having bills and becoming an adult. Saving up is easy. You get your check, you put it away. Right. It can be easy if you're not a spender. Right. But I wasn't a spender. But then you have, oh my gosh, I'm married, I have kids, I have so much to do. Right. I have so but it's like fitness, I think. You know, I was talking to a nutrition person the other day and it's like, if you're not, you can't give to yourself and take care of others if you're not fit or nutritionally fit or strong. It doesn't mean you've got to be fat or skinny, but if you're not healthy in a financial way, you can't help anybody. You can't help yourself. You're not teaching your children how to be money savvy. Correct. There's so many things. You're also limiting what your life experience is. Right. You know? right. If you can save just that little bit. Right. I think it's it's so important and that's why I wanted to talk about this today because it doesn't take a lot and I think people shut down. Like people will look at the title of this episode today and I hope they will open it. Right. And you know, you know, even if you're ashamed, more reason to do so. Correct. Yeah, it's so easy to shut down when we feel overwhelmed or we put that shame on ourselves when it's that's really when we need to reach out. Yeah. Elisa and I were talking and I was asking her, well, what do you do when, you know, you you put things down? Sometimes you're in such a situation where you just need to find more income too. Right. So everybody has a different situation. Sometimes it takes just a little tweak and things start happening really quickly. Right. You start to see a positive change. And sometimes it takes a lot longer and you got to stick with that. Right. Right. You got to have that stick to it. Nice. But, but, and that's where a coach can come in and help too. And, and I, you know, I enjoy working one-on-one -on -one with people because I can tailor my my services to their needs. Like we can, everybody's different. And group coaching is great to a degree, but then I think at, at certain times we need that one-on-one. -on -one. You can open up more about right. be more honest right. about your situation. Right. And I mean, anything you tell Lisa, I can tell you from from working with her that it, it you know it doesn't leave that that conversation. It, and that's really important to know and trust somebody. Um, her business is called Bustin My Budget, and where can we find you before, you know, we, we, we finish this conversation? <laughs> Tell us where we can find you, connect with you. My website, bustinmybudget.com, so it's B-U-S-T-I-N, no G, because busting means we're doing something well, so 
that we are going to do well with our budgets. Oh, you can find me there. I am on Instagram as well, Bust In My Budget. And, you know, you'll probably put the links in the show notes. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, um, if you get on my website, you can click and get 13 common money pits. And what a money pit is, is, is something that we may not know is going on in our budget where we're losing money. It can be unused subscriptions, anything like that where the monthly fees going out and we're you know maybe we signed up to be at the gym in January now we're you know approaching the middle of the year and things are not don't be ashamed if you're not using it don't pay for it right? even business like we were talking oh, about yes. apps yes. right we were talking yes. about so if you're a businesswoman and you're listening to this you know I use the free version of Canva to do my social media I'm not embarrassed right do I have the money to pay for it yes do I feel it's necessary no and so I pick and choose what, right. what I need, you know? Right. If it works for you, pay for the extra. I'm just giving Canva as an example. It could be your email list, it could be cooking call, anything. Right. We all sign up, like you said. Right, it, that you need to evaluate them at least once a year, if not every six months, just to see, am I using that? And that's what I do with my business too. It's like, am I still using that service? Not really. My business has shifted or I've shifted or, or you know, your needs have shifted. And so don't keep paying for something you're not using. Exactly. But don't take that money and go buy pizza. <laughs> figure out what that is, what your monthly thing is, and just figure it out. Like, right. do an automatic payment where it's just put into something else, you know? So if you right. don't have debt, Lisa, I just have a couple more questions. If you don't have debt, what should you be concentrating on? Is it just understanding money more? I think understanding and planning for the future. You know, uh, shockingly, I've learned recently that retirement is your most it's going to be your busy, biggest expense over your lifetime more than a house more than kids and so we we need to make sure everyone is planning from when they're entering that workforce for retirement it's and that tough. can be investing it can be you know if you work for a company that has a retirement plan making sure you're meeting their match to get the most out of it um, but just even just being aware of that I think helps people mm -hmm. you know that awareness piece of oh yeah and you know, when you're 25, 30, sometimes that seems so far off, but when you're investing, time is your friend, right? Yeah, absolutely. The sooner you can get something started, you know, the better it's going to be and the more it's going to grow. And, um, but it's never too late, on the other hand. I don't want you to beat yourself up if you haven't started something. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just, again, knowledge, awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I can tell you guys, I've worked with Lisa. She has helped me personally. And just the other day, you know, I was like, what have I learned? And I had a conversation with my son who's getting ready to apply for university. And he's not one of these that he'll sit and do an hour, two hours and write an essay for a grant. He's just like, oh, really, mom, do we have to do this? And I said, well, how much do you make at your, your part-time job? And he was like, well, you know, minimum wage, $15 an hour. And I said, okay. If you get grants that total five, ten, twenty thousand, how long would it take you to make that money as a sixteen-year-old? And he looked at me and he's like, "Okay, are you going to help me with the grants? Like, we need to do this, you know." So he got it. But these are little things that I learned throughout working with her that maybe I didn't think of before. Not because I'm an idiot, but just because you know you get busy in life. And I wasn't necessarily taught about money from my mom and dad. They right. worked super hard. And you know they did everything they could, but you just don't know. And sometimes as an adult, you have, you're for, like you're forced to. You're in a situation that you don't understand why you're in that situation, and it helps. And uh, it's not something I really started on my own. So I appreciate that, Lisa, very much. Right. right. Yeah, it's it's tough, but you gotta you have to be willing to do it. And it's okay to be scared. Most things that change our life for the better are a little bit scary. Scary. A lot of my guests on my show they say, well, when you you know, you keep going, you take one step forward, two steps back, but you can't, I had a guest early on, on the podcast who said, you can't take a step forward and a step back at the same time. Oh. And I never forgot that. That yeah. was Sean Coe. And I never, never forgot that. And small steps, I've learned that in interviewing people on my show, how you can feel fulfilled, easier, quicker wins. Right. If you take small steps. Right. Oh, definitely. A quick psychological win will just really get you going. Boosting, right? Yes. And you're like, oh my right. God, I can do this. Right. First step, acknowledge what's going on in your finances. That's a win. You may think, I don't want to look at that. That's not a win, but it is a win. Just, just acknowledging that. Yeah, and I mean, there's different generations too. Correct. I know a lot of older women who are very financially stable. 
I know some who are financially stable, but if their husband or partner were to pass away, they don't know where their stuff is. They don't know. I've had that recently. A few people have passed away that I know. And the women are like, well, I didn't do the bank. I, I'm not educated and I don't know what to do. And it just gives you stress and hardship that you don't. You don't, you don't need, need, especially at a time like that when you've already lost a loved one. If there's enough stress and heartache going on, you don't need to add that piece to it. Right? Exactly. I've done her tips. You can find it on her website. It's awesome and I love it, you know. And check her out on Instagram. It's hard to make money fun. But she tries to make money fun, <laughs> and she's doing a great job. So, you know, there's no pressure to work with Lisa, but you'll have a connection. And if you don't, move on. But, great. you know, great. so I think it'll be great. Yeah. Budgeting isn't restricting, and it isn't boring. It's, it's actually freeing, because then you know I'm taking care of this payment, or I'm saving for this trip. Like, you've got control of it. So I always say don't or you want to start telling your money where to go and not wondering where it went <laughs> love that so much lisa just we're coming to the end of our interview what would you say is the biggest gift you gave to yourself that helped you change the opinion that you had about yourself i think the biggest gift i have given to myself over the last couple of years would be working with a personal coach a life coach mm -hmm. and just being vulnerable to them? Being vulnerable. Her. And, um, yeah, it's helped me personally and it's helped me as an entrepreneur as well. It affects all areas of your life and just, it, it brings, you know, it brings attention to things that you were like, oh, I didn't realize I was reacting that way or why was I reacting that way? Now I can understand that and can move forward and just letting some of that, some of that stuff go. Sounds really good. Sounds important. Yeah. You know, nobody's ever asked me on my show, but would you like to ask me? I think I might answer that question yes, today. Yes, Celia. What's, um, <laughs> what's the biggest gift? What's the biggest gift you've given yourself? So, I used to think I was a bit of a pushover. So, one of the biggest things I did for myself was not care so much about what other people think. That was huge for me. Not care so much about what people say. Live life my way and thinking and that was hard because I lost friendships sure. um, things have, you know relationships have changed when you let go of certain things right. it's hard but in doing that I'm able to think more about my finances I'm able to think more about what I want to do in my life which you know is make other people's lives better right it's you know I think giving yourself permission to and working with somebody right it so really helpful. changes your life yeah life is so short and we just need to we need to advocate for ourselves yes. and we need to learn and money is a big one. It's a big topic. It is a huge topic. It is. Yeah. And I mean, you start small if that's where you're at and if you're ready to move faster, we're ready for you. That's right. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, you want to know a little bit more about Lisa, uh, reach out to her and bustinmybudget.com. And if you want to reach out to me and ask me questions about Lisa, I'm a great testimonial. So reach out to me as well. Definitely. Thank you very much for listening. And yes, we're in a beautiful Guatemala city today and we're leaving tomorrow. We're sad to say, but we're working. I mean, we've, I've been doing interviews and we're working and Lisa's been here. Um, and just to get let you guys know, um, you know, we talked earlier about working with businesses that give back. So Lisa did do a workshop here and just connected with people. And I mean, she's got a beautiful heart and yeah, I don't know. I can't say enough things. So, you know, just connect with us and see what's going on and see if it's for you. And if it's not, no hard feelings and we're good to go. But whatever you do, whatever you decide, take a step in the right direction. Right. You know, care enough about yourself to be financially educated, to be financially secure. Definitely. I think that's the message today. Your step is too small. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week on another episode of the Giving Starts With You podcast. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe or leave a review. See you next week on the Giving Starts With You podcast.